Hey everyone, it is Georgie, the CEO and founder of GSD Solutions. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Zoom meeting in 2023. So let's dive in. The first thing you wanna do is head over to zoom.com or zoom.us and it'll bring you to the sign in page. It's best if you have a paid Zoom account, but you don't have to have a paid Zoom account in order to create a Zoom meeting. You could just sign up to a Zoom account and create a free account. So you're going to put in the email and password for the account that you'd like to use, and then you're going to hit sign in. Once you've signed into your account, it's going to bring you to your profile page. For any reason, if you already were signed into Zoom, it may bring you to a page where it'll say my account in the top right corner. But now that it's brought us to our profile page, what we want to go ahead and do is click on the schedule button. So we're going to go ahead and hit schedule. When you hit the schedule button, it's gonna bring you to this page where it'll allow you to schedule a meeting. You wanna go ahead and add in the topic of the meeting. So this could be called my test meeting. If you have a description or you plan to create a Zoom landing page, which I'll explain in just a moment, you would go ahead and add your description. So test description here. Then you're gonna to proceed to adding the time and date as well as the duration of the event. So if the event is in a week, at you know 1 30 p.m and it, the duration is for two hours you'll go ahead and add in those additional details next up you want to select your time zone right be mindful of this when and what time zone is your event going to be in because that's what it will reflect on the registration page if you so use one as well as what it will reflect on the calendar invite when people try to join the meeting so just double check your time zone if this is a recurring meeting which means you will be doing this same meeting over and over again and it's not just that one time in one place you could go ahead and hit recurring meeting and it will allow you to choose how many recurrences it will have um, how often it repeats as well as the end date so if you do have a recurring meeting you have the options here to go ahead and fill those in next up is registration so what registration does is allow you to uh, have people put in their name and their email when they're signing up for the event as well as you can export a report report post event to see how many people registered what their contact information is and registration also allows you to add custom questions let's say you wanted to know their favorite color their shoe size what school they're attending you can include those questions in registration so for this demo we're going to go ahead and in include registration so you can put it as required then you could select the meeting ID, which you can either use your personal ID or it will generate an automatic ID. We can skip over a template from now and passcode as well as having a waiting room allows for additional security on the event, especially if you're doing an event that is open to the public. You can then choose to allow the host as well as participants to have their uh, video automatically turn on upon entering the event. Oftentimes you can leave this off and then a person could then choose to turn on their video when they join the event. As well as the audio, you can select if you only want people to be able to drop, dial in through the telephone, computer audio, or both. I suggest having people have the option to dial in with both because for various reasons, someone may be traveling or have technical difficulties or the audio on their computer may not work. So you wanna give them the option to dial in on their phone even if they're watching and engaging uh, in the Zoom meeting from their computer. Up next, which is a very important part, is going to be our options. So you want to go ahead and click the blue show button under options, and this will allow you to amplify the event even more. So for example, you are setting up the Zoom meeting, but you don't need to be at that meeting and it's for a colleague or for a team member or, for, or a family member or a friend. And you want them to be able to join the Zoom meeting without having to wait for you to open up the Zoom room. Then you would select allow participants to join at any time. This allows just anyone to join at any time, even though again, they're going through the screening, but that way you don't have to be at a specific time or if you may re be running late. I recommend doing this if you have a more personal event, such as again, a family event, a birthday party, um, a nonprofit organization meeting that is you don't have to be there or you don't have to be there on time, but other folks may be using the link to join. Uh, additionally, you, want, you may want to click mute participants upon entry. This will just make sure that if the session has already begun, when a participant joins, they'll be automatically muted. Next up, you could also select for automatic recording of the meeting. That just means when you, the meeting started, it's going to record automatically to the cloud or to the desktop, as well as you can approve or block uh, specific people from specific regions if this is a more high level event that you need privacy. 
Once you've selected your additional options that you'd like, uh, alternative hosts. So I'm going to talk a little bit about alternative hosts because this one you can put in other people's names, but if your alternative hosts are not a member on your company's Zoom account, it more than likely won't work. So that's why I've skipped over this step. If you do allow participants to join at any time, this can be an alternative way to get around, to bypass the alternative host because anyone could join at any time and then that person could then lead the session. So now we've created our Zoom event and I'm gonna go ahead and save. Once we've saved the event, it'll then populate a page that has the information for our event as well as the Zoom link, which we can copy and share and distribute with the participants how we so choose how we choose fit. Um, and then you can go over to registration where you can uh, select how you want people to be registering. So we could do manage registration. So once people start registering, you could see who's registered. Then if we go ahead and edit registration options, you can choose to manually approve people if you choose to manually approve people, that means they will register, then you'll get a notification that they've registered and then you could approve or deny that person. Automatic approval means if they've registered, they can get the link and information to join the day of. You could also choose to send an email to the host upon every registration, close registration after the meeting date, as well as allow registrants uh, to join from multiple devices. This just means if I'm joining from a computer as well as a phone, um, I can join on multiple devices. You could also restrict the number of registration. Let's say it's a limited event and you wanna restrict the number of registrations or you can show um, social share buttons on the page. This will allow when a person is registering them to share it on social media. And I'll show you an example of that in just a moment. Now, the important part, uh, questions. If you have custom questions that you wanna ask people upon registering, this is where you would add those. So you could, in Automatically included is their first name and email address, but you could add their um, home address, city, state, uh, phone number, orientation, organization, as well as custom questions of your choosing. And the custom questions could look like um, a short text answer or a single choice on a multiple choice prompt. So if you wanna add custom questions, you would go ahead and do that and then just check mark them as required. Then once you're done there, you wanna go ahead and hit save all so that way your changes are saved. Now we can move over to email settings. So this is a little bit more technical. You may not need to adjust this in any way, but if you wanted to change the language of the email, the contact person that the email gets um, sent to, so when the email gets sent to a participant, this is the email that it will say it is coming from. So that way, if they do reply, it'll go to that email address. Then um, confirmation email to registration registrants. So if you want the email to say a custom piece of information, you would go ahead and edit it here. Um, to see what it looks like. And you could add custom text inside of there as well. Just remember again, make sure you save any changes that you make. If you wanna add branding such as a banner or a logo to the registration page, you can do that as well. And you could also pre-create polls for the event. My account has live streaming set up, so I could also configure a live stream that will happen to this Zoom event. In another video, I'll be going over how to add polls, what type of polls you can add, as well as how to do your live streaming. But I hope this was helpful for how you can set up a Zoom event in 2023. Thanks for watching and I hope this video was very informational for you all that's out there trying to set up virtual events and virtual meetings. At GSD Solutions or our company is focused on doing this type of support. So reach out to us in the link in the comment section below if you want support like that for your upcoming event or your programming. Thanks and we'll catch you in the next video.